Week three of minor league cricket featured plenty of movement in the division tables. Let's take a look at how things went down. In the East, a 1-1 split between New Jersey Stallions and the Somerset Cavaliers created an opening for the Philadelphians who maximized with a pair of victories over the young Manhattan Yorkers to jump into first place. With two games in hand over both the Stallions and Cavs, Philly at least has the illusion of breathing space heading into their cricket festival on September 2nd at Hatfield. The Atlanta teams joined the party in the South, with the fire heaping onto Orlando Galaxy's woes, sweeping a two-game series. Kanar Lewis blasted 70 runs at a 159 strike rate, and Corne Dry took six wickets at an economy of 471 for the defending Atlantic Conference champs. Atlanta Lightning overcame one fiver on Saturday, outlasting Vinit Tagarsi's impressive 5-for-23 outing, but they couldn't overcome a second fiver on Sunday, as Kevin Stout's 5-for-15 led the Lions to their first season win. And speaking of Kevin Stout, his 5-for in the Lions win over the fire, combined with two wickets in Fort Lauderdale's loss, are enough to make him our Atlantic Conference Bowler of the Week. Batter of the Week in the Atlantic goes to Taganarine Chanderpaul, who only needed two games to move into third place in the Atlantic in runs, scoring 106 at a strike rate just north of 129. Moving to the west, the Grizzlies' batting woes left them prime targets for Saurabh Netravalkar and the Silicon Valley Strikers. Sunday's game featured a wild finish with the Strikers managing to win with two buys on the final ball. Swung on and missed. They look to throw him out. They missed. A chance at a direct hit. They miss again. Scores are level. Coming back for another. They fumble it at the key. With the wins, SVS jumps the pack into first place, but undefeated East Bay have two games in hand. And in the Central, a week off for Texas teams gave Michigan, St. Louis, and the two Chicago teams a chance to make their mark on the table. For the Kingsmen and the Cricket Stars, that's exactly what happened as Michigan swept the Tigers and the Kingsmen swept the Americans. With that, the Michigan Cricket Stars sit in first place and the Kingsmen slot just behind them in second in a central table that's sure to create several great storylines this season. Our Pacific Bowler of the Week for Week 3 is Mir Hamza, who took a pair of four wicket hauls to sweep St. Louis. Batter of the Week in the Pacific goes to Canadian Nicholas Curtin, whose skillful 116 runs moved him to the top of the leaderboard in the conference for the season. Emerging Player of the Week for Week 3 goes to Matanj Nithyanandam, who scored 62 runs in two games, opening the batting for Chicago Tigers against a very potent Michigan bowling attack. Next up, we've got a very special guest who was recently selected for the Dubai Capitals in the ILT20, our own Mohamed Mohsen. Joining me today is one of Major League Cricket's best stories, Mohamed Mohsen of the Texas Super Kings and the Michigan Cricket Stars of Minor League Cricket. Mohsen, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. We've been trying to connect on an interview here during Major League, but th there's, this is a better time for it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And finally, after ending up in the two different hotels, we are finally together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were supposed to meet at the lobby of the hotel, and I got the hotel wrong. So uh, that was my fault. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me today to talk about we're going to talk about Major League. We're going to talk about Minor League. We're going to talk about Canadians. We're going to talk about all this, all this really cool stuff. We're going to talk about the the ILT 22, um, which you just got selected for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mosin, you were the you were MLC's first domestic star, uh, you know, big star performance. In on the first night of the season, there were seven total wickets by your team claimed by domestics, and you took four of them. The other three, uh, Rusty and Calvin, they struck early on the power play. What was that like? You know, starring you took four wickets that night. I remember we were going crazy because uh, the minor league players did so well. Uh, you and Rusty and Calvin, uh, what was that like the first night to start a, a tournament like that? Yeah, I think it was a great night to start the tournament, especially the first game and the first night of Major League and then uh, all the stuff that happened behind and then coming into Major League, playing the first game. It was like no pressure and stuff like that, but Kelvin and Rusty did a really good job early on taking those uh, first couple of uh, wickets in like first four or five overs. They were like five down. And then when uh, when I came to bowl, there was a partnership happening uh, between Russell and uh, Narayan and Russell was smoking everyone out of the ground. <laughs> So I was thinking that it, it it might be like my first and last game or it might just give me a push to play all the games. And then the later one happened and I performed well. 
Yeah, speaking of people who were smoking it all over the ground, uh, you actually, I believe you came in to bat at the end of that innings uh, for a couple of balls, but you stood at the non-strikers end and, and, you watched, <laughs> uh, and you watched a pretty good display yourself. Yeah, I think it was uh, pretty much the story throughout the tournament. I would just come in and then go back <laughs> zero ball zero, and then I, I I just managed two three balls the the whole tournament. So right. it was nice. Yeah, yeah. Was it that first game that you batted, or was it the? It might have been no, the, it second, was the second one. Second yeah, it game. Was the second one. Right, and that was DJ Bravo. Went we went he went nuts at that game. <laughs> yeah, he was smoking everyone out of the ground. He just couldn't he couldn't go wrong too. They. You know, they would move a fielder, he would edge it right where the fielder was. You know, like it was, he just couldn't do anything wrong that innings. Yeah, it was just kind of uh, when it is your day, it is your day. So he was, he was on song that day. Yeah. In that first game, you mentioned uh, Rusty and Calvin taking the early wickets. So you're a, you're a wrist spin bowler. And in T20 cricket, how great is it coming in when you've already got a few wickets down thanks to your uh, power play bowlers? Yeah, I think uh, before going into the game, I was thinking all about the top order, how I'm going to bowl to them, what what I was planning to them, and then they were taking one one after the other. The wickets were going down, and I was like uh, just waiting. I thought it it might end in the ten tenth hour, eleventh hour, and I don't even get to bowl. But then uh, <laughs> I got to bowl, and then uh, the plans that we had uh, before the game they worked. Uh, we tried our best, and then they worked, and we had a very good game. Right, right, and as a as a wrist spin bowler, you got to be ready. You know, you 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 got a, a tough job because you have to. If you come in and there's nobody out, you got to get somebody out. And if and but but if you get in a situation like you were in that day, power play wickets in hand. And, you know, you already had some power play wickets. That's like a that is the perfect spot for a, a wrist spin bowler because that now your job is to just mow through everybody. You know, it's it sets the table up really well for you. But but I mean, it, you were prepared to come in and break up a partnership if you had to. It sounds like. Yeah, I think if if you if you take risk spinners, uh, the first over the ball is is them against them. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> not not a lot of things come in the mind. It's just if if I'm going to bowl in the right areas or not. Like every time you come to bowl as a risk spinner, it is a it is a high reward bowling, but then it is difficult as well. Sure. Like every time it feels like you're bowling for the first time. And I'm uh, <laughs> if if you ask any risk spinner, he will answer you that. <laughs> and then when when I came to bowl the first over, and then I saw that uh, Russell was not picking up my googly, that was like where I, my confidence just get boosted, and then I knew that I'm on top here. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Risk spin is is one of those. It, it's definitely it's definitely a you know it's a glorious position. Let's just say like you 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 know you're either going to get bashed around or you're going to get people out. It's yeah. like there's no real happy medium. You don't see a whole lot of like really economical wrist spinners who just hold the end down and build up pressure for the other guy. You know like I mean, you know there was Janaid Siddiqui for Canada who who was really good at that. And you're you're there for to take wickets and you're there to you know to take those risks. So you got to back yourself. Yeah, I think, and then that's where uh, if if your fast ball gets early wicket, it it helps a lot. Like uh, when you come in to bowl, and then there are even if there is one new batter on the crease, you still feel that extra bit of confidence that you can come and get into your rhythm. And then if there are two set batters, then it's either you're getting one of them out, or they are getting you out of the boundaries all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Yeah, and, and obviously the the ground there down in Texas, which is the home ground for the Texas team in the future, um, but it's you know one of two grounds right now. Um, that ground has a short side. You know, it doesn't seem to matter which pitch you play on. Uh, there's going to be a short side to the to over to the west of the ground. So um, that makes for some. You know that that certainly affects the strategy when you're when you're a leg spinner. Yeah, especially uh, and and then there's wind as well from one side. So if if you are bowling to a shorter side and the wind is on that side, then it's it's all in the better's hand. You can just yeah. come and bowl, right? And then uh, but the good thing was that we had uh, plan for almost like every batsman from which side we will, uh, who will bowl from which side, and even if if you bowl from the other end, what's the plan? So. Everything was there, uh, especially in franchise cricket. You do plan a lot of things, and then it kind of makes things a lot easier when you're on the ground. Like it gives you a bit of uh, when you have a plan, you're already like fifty percent up uh, from the best one. So, so that's that that helped actually. Right, right, and 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 Faf was the was the captain of the team. Didn't never really came around with the bat, but you know when you're the captain of the team, sometimes uh, you know when you have a captain, sometimes you don't always look at their 
output and to, to, to think about their value. So it sounds like, you know, with your team, at least uh, you got a lot of value from him uh, as a captain. Yeah, I think Faf as a captain uh, is, is a great personality. And then uh, even though he was not bo- uh, performing with the bet, his captaincy skills were always up to the mark. Like, sure. like normally, if you think if if you are a better, it does affect even if you are captain, it does affect your captaincy if you are not performing well. But I didn't see like a bit of change in his captaincy. He was there all the time. He was uh, like uh, in the game, k- keeping us in the game, and then uh, the strategies were working. And he had a vast experience of uh, captain South Africa, other league teams, and you can see that on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, and he, you know he he fielded very well too. He was his his catching in the field was was uh, for the most part outstanding. Um, but the really great story for you is is and this probably didn't feel like such a great story about six months ago. Um, <laughs> you know, you you were drafted. You weren't drafted in the initial draft. You you went to the combine. All of us, everybody that talks about cricket in the USA anticipated you going in the draft and we anticipated you going actually in a, at a pretty high place in the draft, just from, from watching you in minor league and from seeing the impact that you have made with uh, Michigan in minor league um, and the reputation you have around the country and watching you perform in other tournaments. Um, everybody assumed that you would just be, you know, somewhere, you know, nobody probably would have guessed you would go after, after the sixth round, you know, everybody would have thought, at least by the fifth fifth round, he's he's gone. He'd be drafted, but you didn't get drafted. It was one of the big surprises. I saw you down at the draft. You were in good spirits. Uh, you, you know, you were in a great mood. Um, but leading up to that, in the combine, you were uh, nursing a little bit of an injury. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, before the the combine, uh, I had a really great tournament of HPL where I got ten wickets in five games. I was the best bowler. So keeping that in mind, going into a draft, I was very confident to go there and perform and then get selected in one of those top three categories. But just a couple of days uh, back, we had a fitness test uh, uh, for the ace players, MLC players. And in that, I just kind of uh, niggled my back. And then we had two back-to-back days of practice. In those practice, that niggle just went a bit up. And then because of that, because the tournament was very short, and it was a three or four days tournament, and then you had to play back-to-back games and it was difficult. I played the first game. I tried to play the first game. I bowled just two hours in that game, but then that actually uh, aggravated the in- injury a little bit more. It was not that bad, bad, but I, I I didn't play the other game because I didn't want it to ruin my whole season. So sure. I think I just I just kept myself, even in the final game, I, I played as a batsman only. And I did score like 26 or something of 9-10 balls. Right. But right. going into the draw, as you said, everyone, I was expecting as well to go into at least the first five rounds. And then uh, when I didn't got uh, dropped it, I still had that uh, wild card thing in my mind that they still have one pick, every team have it. Sure. And then minor league is coming up. And then I always uh, like look into the opportunities, positive side of the of everything. So even at that time, I was just thinking I would perform in minor league and just trying to get drafted through the wild card. And right. then if I get drafted, and I perform next year, I might get a better pick. Sure. Right. No, no, absolutely. And then, you know, obviously the, the tricky situation you found yourself in is we might not have a lot of wrist spinners in the, in this country, um, but we have a lot of left arm orthodox spinners. And that's these are bowlers that turn the ball away from the right handed batter. And that's a very important part of T20 cricket. So we have so many of those. Uh, Lamilo Aponzo didn't go in the initial draft either, and, and we all thought that he would too. But looking back at it, I mean, afterwards, I'm, I I remember thinking in hindsight, okay, this kind of makes sense because what are the what are the players, the stars of cricket uh, of T Twenty cricket around the world of franchise cricket? They're they're wrist spin bowlers. You know, these are some of the biggest stars of cricket. You know, and and so of course some of these teams are going to bring those players with them. So and, and we had three really big uh, wrist arm spinners uh, with big international fame, at least three. We had four, f- four or five yeah. and, you know, actually five or six. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. had we had a lot in Major League Cricket that were internationals. And um, so it's a really tough role to make your way in in franchise cricket, especially when you have uh, franchises like uh, the Super Kings and, and like uh, M- uh, Mumbai Indians, New York, who are, you know, 
they, these are well established franchises with with established role players that that they're going to bring with them and so that that's a tough role to make your to make your way into um and also like i said when you just when you when you're at the combine and you have you have reason to protect yourself too. It's not just major league. What I think a lot of people don't understand, might not understand people who are looking at this from abroad. Uh, they might not understand that it's not just major league cricket. That's going to provide for a professional cricketer here in the USA. There are other tournaments that you have to be available for throughout the year. Um, yes. They're smaller tournaments and they're weekend tournaments, but they, you know, they pay, they pay. So, so this is, this is how a lot of cricketers here make their living. So you can't just sell out in the, in the combine. You have to be, you know, you know, you can't just sell out and then I'll, I'll be okay by the time the season starts. You know what I mean? Because there's probably a, there's a, there's definitely a league happening next weekend or the weekend after where you're going to, where you have a chance to make money. And so, you know, it makes sense that you would pull back at that point when you were like, okay, well, I can't afford to injure myself for three months right now and I can stop this right now. So I will. So I think, I think there's something to be said for that. I don't think a lot of people understand that aspect. Yeah. I think coming uh, on your first point on the leg spinners, uh, being world superstars and then uh, finding it difficult. But I think on the contrary, if you see, if you are a leg spinner, uh, and play as a local in some league, that actually is like a, a big thing for the franchise cricket. If they right. have get if they get a good leg spinner locally, yeah, then they can just like uh, play a, a batsman or a fast bowler international play in their eleven because not all eleven of the international will play, right? There that's are right. Only four or six are allowed. And sure. uh, I think that's it. that even happened in uh, in my case. Like uh, I performed in the first game, and then uh, Iman Tahir was with us, and uh, he didn't play. My uh, Mitchell Santner played because. One of the leggy was performing, so so that's sure. a big advantage on the contrary side. And then yes, uh, on the other uh, aspect of the U.S. cricket, uh, these private tournaments are actually very important because you don't get a lot of uh, you know uh, ways to earn money if you come as a professional cricketer here. And uh, then these tournaments are important as well. And even at that time, uh, on on the back of my mind, it was not uh, just these tournaments, but it was like. I have been through a, a back injury back in 2019, like, and it was a really uh, worse one. So it took me like six to eight months to recover. So I didn't want it to go into that shell again. And now I know, uh, like, my body, my injuries, and everything much better. So I just keep things accordingly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. You, you know, it's important to know to know your, like you said, know your body, know your limitations. It's it's you, you know, it just as your you know you, your best coach is yourself. You know, yeah. a lot of times you have to be your own best coach. You have to find a way to make yourself the be your best coach. You kind of have to be your own physio too. You know, you have to you have to learn your body and 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 understand what your limits are. Um, but you mentioned after the draft, thinking, okay, well, we still got the wild card round. Then about a month or two after the after the major league draft, we got some really bad news. Minor league cricket was was not going to play the first half, and we would have no ace related no major league cricket related cricket until major league cricket started and so that put the wild card pick into question were we going to have this wild card round still and how are they going to determine who's who's who they're going to take it could be anybody at that point and so um and you have uh you know you you've performed incredibly well in minor league cricket but a lot of people have performed incredibly well in minor league cricket. Now, not a whole lot, but but there are people who have played more minor league cricket games than you have, who have a bigger record uh, that, that that people can sift through. And, you know, so it all basically came down to uh, the impression you made in the uh, in in the combine, the fact that you were at the combine, which goes to show that some people thought highly of your skills in the first place. And, um, you know, obviously your performances, your resume, your international, your, your, your previous first class resume, um, in, in Pakistan, um, all of these things, you know, kind of factored into this, uh, decision, but you ended up getting drafted and there were actually four of the six players taken in that wild card round, which was just days before major league cricket, uh, the little, the camps started in major league cricket, um, leading up to the season. Uh, four of those six players are USA players, players that who play on USA national team. So, and it was you and Amila were the other two. Yeah, I think uh, when when we heard the news that minor league first half is not going to happen, 
still there were two private tournaments that were going to uh, happen the the unity cup and the houston open so right. like like my eyes were on those that uh, if i perform in those and then if the wild card pick happens because you're right we, we were unsure even if that uh, wild card pick will even happen or no and uh, all eyes were on those two tournaments but again like uh, i have this very strong belief that if if something is written for you or something is going to happen it's going to happen and yeah. then everything happened on the on the right time so i have this very strong belief that keep me going like keep me positive about things and uh, it was just this and then i was just focused more on working hard because as you say it's not just minor league and major league there are a lot of like eight nine private tournaments as well right so if if you keep performing in those tournaments you get uh, picked in the in the like other tournaments as well and even in the minor league and, and minor league was something that i was already got picked and i have already performed there as well sure. so yeah so all of these things combined uh, we were unsure even even till the like a day before the the wild card drop happened that even if it will happen or no because it just happened like four or five days before the the tournament starts yeah and then and then getting picked and then like even if when i was uh, picked i was not sure if i will get a game or not because You're right they 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 just had like three or four days to see me right and then luckily when uh, when i went to the practices uh, they they liked me straight away and then i got that feeling of they might even make me right. play and then they they made me play yeah well I think I think cuz you 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 ended up going to the same team that had what many people think is the other best uh leg leg spin bowler in the country Zia Shazad. So yes, yep. you were lucky that you got you were feeling fortunate that you got picked. But when then you look and you say, "Oh my goodness, the luck of this. I end up on the team with the other best <laughs> a leg break yeah. bowler in the country." And and um but the style though you both bowl uh leg break bowling uh, your style is different. Your your approach is different, and your weapons, your your uh, your repertoire is different. And so, um, maybe something that benefited you was Santner being in the eleven, being in the eleven, and having a, a a bowling style that's not terribly different from from Zia's, even though he you know one's a left arm orthodox and one's a a leg break bowler, and you brought a different variety. That, that looked a lot different from from Santner. So, do you think that that ha that happened to help you out in terms of uh, selection? Yeah, when I when I got drafted, actually, I was uh, happy that time with uh, Zia and Sami, uh, and then uh, Zia, you you're right, and he's a very good mate uh, of mine. So, so even yeah. when we said we we would uh, discuss that Imran Thai is coming, and we might have both of us to sit there, <laughs> but we we still would discuss that if Imran Thai is coming. we are still on it because we have a lot to learn from him and then we oh, had yeah. a lot to learn from him. we were just sitting with him all the time we oh, had, man. yeah yeah we we try to learn as much as possible from him and then he's a great guy as well so he and is, yeah. you're right like like me and uh, zia have a bit of different uh, style of bowling he's a little slower and loopy and then i am a, a bit quicker in the air and i think my bowling uh, style suits t20 more because in t20 uh, if you see bowlers who are like quick in the air and then who bowl length a lot right they are, they tend they tend to be more successful and then i think that's that's the one thing that uh, might like uh, and then the sentner thing as well yeah you're right him him and uh, zia have a lot of uh, similarities in style of bowling right uh, obviously they are different like one is leggy and one is left arm spin but both are considered leg spin and then uh, i think the the first game uh even even a day before that uh, we had a practice game in which me and zia both played so i think they must have analyzed something from there and they must have their plans yeah you know uh imran to here like you said really friendly guy but what a what a player too i mean what a cricketer yeah. you know like and, and he just brings so much energy you know it's yeah. it's uh he's just a he's just a joy to watch you know it was cool cuz i i i i met him for a brief second and i just It said I just shook his hand because I just wanted to shake his hand. <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's a legend of the game, and then he, he has got a very cool story behind his cricket as well. So next time when you when you meet him, just sit with him and discuss his story. He has got a really cool story behind how how he moved from Pakistan when and he had a like two fifty plus first class wickets on his back when he moved from Pakistan, and then wow. going from there and playing for counties and playing for South Africa and then becoming a worldwide star. And then he is like one of the most humble guys you will you will meet, and yeah. 
Yeah, and it was it was nice uh, to have company of uh, all these guys, like even uh, Santner, Conway, Duplessis, Bravo, Miller, Sands. Everyone was like so humble, so help helpful. Like we 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 had uh, learned a lot from uh, playing alongside them, and it it was a very nice experience actually. Like other than cricket, even off the field, it was a very nice experience with them. Right, right. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's, it looked like it, it must have been. I mean, I, I I was at the games in Texas, then I was at the games in Morrisville, and I'll tell you what, it was it was just uh the whole thing blew. It was great. It blew me away. It was it was just a lot of fun. It was great to see our guys perform the way that they did with the with the best in the world. You know, some of these guys that we're talking about, Imran Tahir, you know, Rashid Khan, best in the world. You know, these yeah. to hear he, he he like he had a great story, like you said, like that. But the reason why he he was able to pull off what he did is because he's really really good, you yeah. know. It, that's 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 a lot that that it goes a long way when you have a lot of confidence and you have the right attitude. And one of the guys who's yeah. proving that right now in the USA, um, uh, another guy who's proving that is is Nash Ken, uh, Nash Kenjige, who's uh, proving that he's come a long way too. You know, and he's in his early 30s, and and now he's you know he, like you, he was one of the breakout players of the tournament. Yeah, Nosh Nosh is a, a great guy, a great uh, cricketer, and then a very hardworking guy actually. Uh, one of the few hardworking, like very very hardworking guys I ever met in my life. Yeah, and he's an athlete, yeah. And then on the field, he just gives it all, and I think uh, he was one of the breaking star. You're right, and then. I still think he didn't got enough opportunities, but whatever opportunities he got, he he showed he that he's them. a star. Yeah, he really seized them. He really did. And you know, we we all wanted to see him get his quota every game, but we know what goes into deciding when when and who's going to bowl. And you got Rashid yeah. Khan on that team too. The fact that that they knew that they there were games where they weren't going to bowl him, they picked him in the team anyways. That goes to show how highly they think of him. And yeah, uh, and then and then bowling him in the power plays ahead of all these superstars they had and then him performing was like really nice to see so Mohammed, you've been here almost a year and a half i think in the usa and and yep. back at, back in pakistan you know you you studied there you you got a, um, a, a education there and you obviously you played an awful lot of cricket there but you also played basketball amongst other sports you played an awful lot of sports you you just you just really enjoy playing sports don't you yeah, I have been playing like uh, badminton, table tennis, basketball, cricket, soccer since I'm like uh, 11 years old. And I have played all of these games very regularly till, till my university. And then in university, I just cut it short to cricket and basketball. And and then eventually when I became a professional cricketer, I just kept it as a cricket. But yeah, I have played all sorts of sports here. Yeah. How's the basketball in Pakistan? How's the quality? Uh, it is actually good, but uh, like it is played mostly by the the armed forces. They have like uh, professional teams in it, and a lot of departments like uh, Wabda and stuff. They have uh, professional teams, and and but it is not big. But but like whatever I tenant I have saw, there are a lot of good players of basketball out there. Yeah. So what's your position? I played as a, a mid and uh, forward. Like I would, I had a lot of three pointers in my career, so ah. <laughs> I played that. So you're a wing, uh huh? You're a, you're yeah, a wing. wing. Nice, yeah. nice. So, um, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite basketball player? Yeah, LeBron James any day. LeBron James every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> so, uh, do you have a favorite team, or do you just stick with whoever he's playing for? No, I just I just enjoy the game. Actually, I don't. I I actually like favor more of the teams which are down in the game, and then if they good do a good comeback, I like that. I enjoy that. Yeah. So which which basketball player do you do you did you model your game after? Uh, I actually played them like uh, like any sports and then to enjoy them like I haven't think of playing them professionally. Sure. So I haven't I haven't like watched a lot of basketball or uh, other sports. I have always watched cricket. I actually knew like uh, since the age of 11 12 I actually knew which day Pakistan is playing which team at what time it's going to be broadcasted. Especially when the games would be in Australia and New Zealand, they would uh, live broadcast in Pakistan like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I used to like set my alarm secretly and then wake up and then keep the TV on mute so no one else wakes up. And I used to watch like every game, test one day, and then when T20 came, T20, I used to watch Pakistan, all games of Pakistan. Not only Pakistan, like every cricket game. Right, right. Do you have a favorite uh, Pakistani? Who's your favorite cricketer from, from Pakistani? 
Uh, it is uh, the left-handed opening batsman Said Anwar. Ah, cool, cool. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking before about how how you you had some belief in yourself that you would you would eventually end up in major league. Um, one person that, that's a friend of yours who a lot of people had belief that you would honestly, but one person person in particular that I remember writing about uh, on on Facebook, a nice little rant was uh, Johnny Sarkhan, who's uh, who played U19 for for Pakistan and then came here to USA and he played for the USA national team. At one point, you know, he he was easily one of the best batters in the USA. He still is a tremendous uh, cricketer, um, but especially his ability to play spin, his, his sweep shots, you know, pretty, pretty uh, tremendous cricketer. Yeah, Jani Sarkhan uh, has been a tremendous cricketer uh, since the age of 15. I guess he has played for uh, Paris under 15 as well, under 19 as well. And then uh, he has got a, a cool story behind him as well. And especially being from Peshawar, from the region where I have played all my cricket as well. I knew him like even before coming here, but uh, even before that. But I have never thought that I would come to USA and then we'd play in the same team and then, uh, you know, like uh, catch up uh, and and... And he has helped me a lot. Like when I came here uh, early, uh, he has helped me like uh, an elder brother. I didn't know a lot of things here. He helped me with those. He helped me with the, my cricket, with everything. And uh, he's doing a tremendous job now, coaching the kids and then playing cricket as well. He is still like very good. He can uh, he can be up there. You never know in the next major league as well. He's playing for Dallas Mustang this year. Yeah, uh, in yeah. the minor league, and then uh, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great and, guy. and that's a, that's a tremendous team. And Johnny's a friend of mine. Last time I was in Houston, we spent about an hour and a half driving around trying to find a place to eat eat dinner. <laughs> he was taking us to all the best <laughs> spots. So, uh, but yeah, we finally found a good spot. And uh, yeah, he's 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 a great guy. Um, I think um, yeah, that that team that he plays on. Speaking of that 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 um, Dallas Mustangs team. They've got eight major league cricketers plus Janis Arkan. <laughs> so that, that team is, is just uh is extremely good team. However, that said, we're getting into the meat of minor league now in this conversation. You guys in Michigan, the Michigan's tri- uh, cricket stars, you're in first place in the division, and that is surprising a lot of people at this stage in the season of 40% into the season. Um, you guys are in first place. So you and you've managed to leverage the fact that Canadians can play as domestics now. You've managed to leverage that to your advantage on on your team and and put up quite a really impressive looking team right here with Rizwan Chima at the helm, and and Nicholas Curtin, you know, blowing the doors off of everybody at, at present. Yeah, I think uh, if you see our team, we were considered as a. Uh... Like uh, we, we, they, no one gave us a chance in this group, especially uh, where every team is stacked up. Especially the Houston teams, uh, they are like uh, every team have four or five and more major league players. And then us, I, I to be honest, I didn't knew that till the day I joined the team. I didn't knew that uh, the Canadian players we had only Rizwan Chima. I have uh, like heard a lot of. I haven't played with him as well. And uh, Nicholas Kirtan, because uh, in, I saw him in the GT20, the one game he played, he scored a 50. And other than them, I, I didn't knew uh, like half of the team because half of our team is Canadian, right? Right. And uh, then when, when we played together, the first game, it, it felt like we were playing like from, I don't know, from last one year or two years because everyone gelled in so nicely. All of these guys are, are a great bunch of guys and they played uh, cricket professionally in uh, in Canada. So, so they sure. are professional guys. And then... And then, as a group, we gelled very early in the in the first game, especially. Uh, it was a rained out game and a, a short game, so you never know when when you're playing with each other for the first time. A short game is like can be, uh, you know, end up uh, very bad. But it ended up very uh, good actually. We had that uh, left arm spinner Praveen Kumar as well, who is I think one of the top wicket taker right now as well. Right. Uh, he has been performing really well. And then uh, Nicholas Keaton, man. I have nicknamed him uh, Mr. Consistent in our team. <laughs> he, is, he has performed in every game since he's here. And then he's uh, actually a very good player. Uh, normally, if you see like uh, aggressive players, they just slog and then whatever happens, happens. But he's like a very smart uh, cricketer I have seen. He plays according to the situation, according to the need of the team. And that actually makes it very easy for the captain who is playing alongside him on the other end. And, right. Uh, yeah, and then we have got like good starts in almost every game we had up till now, 
and in the couple of games, even in the lower down the order, Anas Mahmood, myself, and we have a, like a very good balanced T20 team right now, and that's why we are on the top as well. Right. Well, yeah, you mentioned Nicholas Curtin and how he doesn't play like a traditional T20 big big hitter. Uh, he actually, uh, uh, Tom Nielsen uh, put a stat out on Twitter recently saying that uh, Nicholas Curtin recently scored uh, 77 runs in his in his uh, most recent innings in, on on the on 19th. Um, and well, maybe it wasn't his most recent, but no, it was his most recent innings. Yeah, 77 runs, and he did so by scoring the fewest boundaries of anybody in in minor league cricket history who faced at least 50 balls. So he, he did it by by twos, by running twos. And uh, Yeah, and he is a tremendous athlete, let me tell you, because when I come to ball, I especially ask the captain to take him long on because he covers like a <laughs> lot of distance. Uh, the catch he took of Zishan Maksud bowling, that yeah. was literally was a he caught a six. That was going flat for six and then... In no time, he was there and diving and getting that catch. And he's, he's a great guy. He's a great athlete, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is definitely. And I, I've got a soft spot for the Canadians myself. You know, especially uh, Rizwan Chima, who who we – he's part of one of my favorite cricket memories here at Church Street Park in 2018. Canada versus USA. Um, they needed a lot of runs in that last over Canada did. And he scored a six on the last ball to send it to a super over. Um, off of uh, Elmore Hutchinson, who is no slouch. Elmore is a very good bowler. And, yeah, so he hit that one into the trees. I remember the celebration, like, right in front of my eyes. I remember that like it was yesterday. And it set up a super over game at Church Street Park. And then the very next game, Stephen Taylor chased 22 in the final over uh, to, to to win the game for USA. So these were these remain the two, probably the two best uh Game T twenty games I've I've ever seen <laughs> were were, yes, were uh, USA games. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Yeah, Rizwan Chima is a very calm and composed character. Uh, he's a very mature cricketer actually, and being captain, having this calm and this mature, it it helps the team actually. Right. And then uh, and he he up there, he just he can hit you for five or six sixes from the from the first ball. Like he's that right. kind of a player. And having yeah. that kind of a player up the order, it gives you that confidence that no matter whatever the target is, you can chase it down, right? Yeah. And uh, the stars he gave us in the last couple of games, it, it shows that uh, he's in very good form. And then the the Houston teams should worry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time he, him and him and uh, Hamza Tarek were two of my favorite players. Uh, the both of them. Both of them can can hit a six on from the start from the first ball, <laughs> you know it's uh, they're both uh, when they have a good game, both of them have huge games, and it, you know he's played in a World Cup, you know uh, Rizwan Chima, so he's he's got all kinds of great experience. But yeah, it's it's your team is very interesting to me because because of so many fa- factors. Because a, you know the the Texas teams are supposed to dominate the Central, um, b- but Michigan's always hung around. Every year, Michigan's right in the race up until the end. So is this the year, do you think? Is this the year that Michigan makes the playoffs? Yeah, even in last year, last game, and if we would have won, we were supposed to be in the playoffs. And it was like every every week we would won one of the game. The next one, if we would have won, we would be like up there at the top or even right. until the last, we would have qualified. This year we have we have broken that curse. We have won back to back games against Chicago. Right, that is, that is one thing we were talking every time we would meet, and now we have broken that curse. And we, hopefully, the team we had, uh, it it seems like we will qualify to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, let's see if you can get over the line. You know, let's see if you guys can can pull it off. It's a. Uh, it, it would be something pretty special. You're wearing bright yellow this year. I don't know where that came came from, but you're wearing. You guys are wearing bright. You really stand out on the ground for sure. Yeah, I think on the camera it looks a lot brighter, but in, if if you see it in real, it's not that bright. And it is a very <laughs> calm and like very nice color. Yellow is, and my it it has become my favorite because whatever team I play for, they have a yellow jersey, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's my favorite now. <laughs> right. Well, when I was a kid growing up, every team I played for was maroon. So it was my high <laughs> okay. school team was maroon. My my I played for the Moose Lodge and they were maroon and you know in baseball and 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 my college yeah. ended up being a maroon college. So it was you know it was the same thing. It was like it just I just happened to have a a color that followed me everywhere I went. Of course we weren't very good. So that was 
that's the downside of that. So I was ready to see yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't play until the first. You play you yep. play the first, the second, the, the third, and the fourth. You have four consecutive games. And this is going to really test your depth, if you ask me, especially with the fast bowling. So what are your what are your thoughts about that? How are you guys planning on managing this 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 situation where you have four games on four consecutive days? Uh, and there and there's no such thing as an easy game in the central. That's true. That's true. Like the the four good games on the trot, it it must be a challenge. And then then the the weather here in Houston, which is like very hot and humid, that's another right. challenge we would face. Like because the the guys from Canada and Michigan, they don't see this weather a lot, so it will be a challenge for them as well. But but being professional cricketers, that's what I told you. Like they adopt very quickly. If if they have adopted to the to the fact that gelling gelling in just one game. I'm sure that they will adapt to the conditions here as well. Sure. And then again, if you if you see our bowling, actually we have a lot of depth in our bowling. We we have uh, young fast bowlers, and then we have very experienced spinners. So right. that gives you like a very good combination of. And then we have a very experienced fast bowler as well. We have uh, uh, Raju Hassan who is who have played Test cricket for Bangladesh. And then sure. yeah, so so up there with the new ball, he's doing great up there now. And then even in the net, we can use him. And especially the wickets, which I know Prairie View and uh, Musa, they they will get tricky. Like right. Prairie View from from the day one, they can be tricky. But Musa, moving on to the second game we play on uh, Musa, will be like our third game, and then the Musa wicket will support spinners, and we have a, a lot of a bunch of spinners in our right. team. So yeah, yeah. So that 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 will help us, and I I see like. It it is uh, more of a challenge for the Houston teams to play against us because we have nothing to lose. They have stacked up their teams, yeah, and they have they have a game to lose there. So, sure. so it, we will be playing like pre cricket and the way we are playing up till now, and we just enjoy our cricket this year. That's our motto: just to enjoy our cricket this year. Well, you're in first place by by taking that philosophy, so you can't argue against it. But you've got the Exforia Giants on Friday the first. The uh, Lone Star Athletics on the second, both of those games that you start off at Musa and then the Sunday and Monday games are Prairie View against the Houston Hurricanes and the Dallas Mustangs. There's not a there's not an easy team in that group. Every one of those teams is is exceptional and you guys are exceptional. So that's going to be can't miss cricket right there. So we and we're going to have we're going to have some good commentary down there because, you know, Brian Walters will be on the call and he's always good for he's always good for entertainment. And uh yeah, so so you know it's 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 gonna be. I really can't wait for the. Those are gonna be some amazing matchups. I think it's, and and honestly, your presence in the team is gonna come in handy because of all the all you mentioned. A lot of guys in the team that have a lot of experience. Well, you have more experience probably than any of them at uh, at Prairie View, especially, which is to me, uh, the it's a trickier place to play. I would imagine because you have the the factor of the wind. And and it's it's just it's very windy there, or it can be. Yeah, it is. It is a lot windy there. And then the wickets on the day you never know. Like one day it can play like a flat track, the other day it can be like turning and bouncing and the ball keeping low. So so it's never two similar days on on Prairie View. Like the experience we had up till now, it it can be anything. So it's very important to adapt to the situation. Like like right. getting that information spread to the team very quickly. Like what what's yeah. happening today. Exactly. And then that's 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 the that's one key thing that I learned in in playing in Texas Super Kings because a lot of those guys were playing for the first time in US. Even we were playing for the first time on those wickets. Yeah. So that information sharing helped a lot. Like it's important. The guys yeah. up there, yeah, sharing it to, to. And then that's that's what we're gonna look forward to playing on these uh, tracks. And hopefully we will do good because we have uh, we have good spinners out there. Right. We have uh, Zishan Maksud. We have Raza Yudar. These two guys have like. Bunch of experience um, of behind their back, yeah. And international, then we have, yeah, 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 international, true, international. And then uh, Raza and Dart have played a lot of T20 cricket, a lot of white ball cricket, like back home in Dhaka right. Super League in England, and like we have, a, we have some very good experienced cricketer this year. And that's 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 gonna be one edge over the the teams here. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think I think the thing is obviously the Texas teams they play there all the time. So you know, I know here at Church Street Park when we when we have a visiting team coming. They could be better than the Morrisville Raptors on paper, but the Raptors have an advantage because they're used to Church Street Park, and Church Street Park is a beautiful ground, and and it's it's you know it's it's a nice ground, it's it's a good place to play, but it has its it has its tricks. It's got its it's got its you know 
if you play there a lot, you have you have a certain advantage. So so as you mentioned, communication with the team, getting the information out throughout the team, knowledge sharing is is really a critical aspect of cricket. Um, you know, because you know you got you got luck in there too. You got to win the toss or lose the toss, and then you got to do what whatever happens. You have to overcome that obstacle. Yeah, I think I think with preview it, it's a bit different because uh, the two grounds they're going to be using is preview five and six. And to be honest, all of these guys have not played a lot of cricket there. The mm-hmm. the local cricket we play, the oh. even the tournaments we play, sure. we get only a couple of games on those two wickets, right? Other right. than that, they have six, five or six grounds. So we play on the other grounds, but minor league is happening just on the two. And then and and the the PV six especially. You either chase 200 on that ground or you even get out like under 100. <laughs> so it's very tricky. It's very yeah. tricky. It's, it's just on the day. Like if you, if you get that information sharing right on the day, it is your day. It's, uh, there will be no home advantage. What I can, I can see that from my experience. Sure. Well, that's good. And that takes a good captaincy, you know, and you seem to have that. You, you have good leadership in the team. So. Uh, it's it's been a great year so far for for you guys, and there's no reason to expect that you can't keep it going. But um, but I think this central this central division this season is very special, and I, I don't know we we see the winds sh- changing often. We we went from the west being the being the best quote unquote division to now the central is the best quote unquote division, and of course I say that in quotations. Of course, in the east we have the struggle right now of of adapting to new environments there that have never been seen before we've, we've not had any turf cricket in in, in the east and, and now we have a new turf wicket with some old slow outfield grass and that is a difficult thing to adapt to um for for those for those in the east but it's necessary growing pains and so every one of these divisions is so unique it's one of the great things about about minor league cricket and this year especially when the, when everything's so division focused you know your schedule is so firmly inside your division um but yes good luck to your team this season uh what what are your what is what is your uh do you have a prediction do you have a final record prediction uh, yeah thank you first of all for the for the good wishes and then i think uh what one prediction i can do is that one of the one of our division team will win the minor league this year, <laughs> and you and you never know. Maybe the final is between two of our teams because you're right. This year it's like every year minor league gets something interesting, and this year the our division is like it looks interesting from day one, and then the games we have played up till now, it has just like become better and better. And right. then other than that, for for our team. I think I can predict that this year my Michigan will at least go to the playoffs. There you go. There you go. I like that prediction. Yeah, you're right, though. A lot of people saw uh, the Dallas uh, Mustangs run, kind of, you know, taking the division. But uh, this division could end up with 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 a six and four team making the playoffs yeah. because of how close all these teams are. They're so good. Yeah, I, I can sense some good surprises from for at least our team this year. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for joining me, Mosin. It's it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm, I'm really uh, excited that we got to catch up. And um, best of luck. Enjoy your your weekend off of not my, playing minor league cricket, and then get ready for the for the long weekend. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Nate. All right. Thanks.